There are a few simple equations you should know to understand solar power. They are just simple formulas using addition, multiplication, and division. Most are familiar with two electricians and electrical engineers. So let's get started. The most basic equation is for power measured in watts. Almost anyone who has purchased an electric light bulb has heard the term. From a math standpoint, it is the electrical potential measured in volts times the electrical current measured in amps. Watts are named after an 18th century Scottish inventor, James Watt, who was instrumental in the development of the steam engine. As an example, if you had a 12 volt car battery and a 120 watt light bulb, the battery would need to be able to supply a steady 10 amps. The most common specification for solar panels is how many watts they produce. If you want to power a 120 watt light bulb, you would need a 120 watt solar panel. All solar panels, in addition to watts, have a maximum voltage and a maximum current rating. Those two numbers, when multiplied, should equal the panel's wattage. Notice the term maximum voltage and maximum current. That number is set when the panel is tested under ideal conditions. Basically, it would be the watts produced at noon on the summer solstice with a panel oriented at a 90 degree angle to the sun. The test value known as solar insulation is 1,000 watts per square meter. If you had a one square meter solar panel that operated at 100% efficiency, it would generate 1,000 watts. Most electric solar panels operate in a range of 15 to 20%. That would generate 150 watts to 200 watts. Solar thermal panels in the 85% range would generate heat equivalent to 850 watts of power for an electric heater. Most solar power installations and even your utility bills use the term kilowatt. A kilowatt from the metric term of kilo or 1000 is 1000 watts. This leads us into the next term of the kilowatt hour. A kilowatt hour is 1000 watts delivered over the span of an hour. Imagine if you turn on a switch to power four 250 watt light bulbs and turn it off 60 minutes later. Over the hour, one kilowatt hour of power was used. If you were to graph it, it would look like this. Output power from a solar panel in watts is highly dependent on the angle of incidence. If you drop a rock directly into water, it sinks. If you get a low angle with a flat skipping stone, it will bounce off the surface. Sunlight is no different. Hourly it changes as the sun transits the sky from east to west. Ideally, solar panels should be oriented facing directly south at an angle. The angle at which the sun hits the solar panels is known as the tilt angle. If the panels are mounted directly on a roof, the tilt angle will be the pitch angle of the roof. Although not ideal, it simplifies installation. Because the Earth's axis is on a tilt and the Earth revolves around the Sun, the Sun's angle changes seasonally. This is known as the solar azimuth. The Sun is higher in the sky during the summer and lower in the winter. If not constrained by the pitch of a roof, the panel's pitch angle should equal the latitude. If a panel is installed in Arizona, for example, the pitch angle should be 33 degrees. When you graph a panel's output, it is a bell-shaped curve that seasonally changes in amplitude and width. The area under the curve is the power output. On average, for each kilowatt of installed panels, you'll get 4 kilowatt hours of power on a daily basis. 10 kilowatts installed, 40 kilowatt hours of solar power generated. Power solar panels connect to your home's electrical system. To understand this, we have to explain series versus parallel voltage sources. You can think of a solar panel like a battery. Each generates a voltage and a current. In a parallel system, the voltage is the average of the battery's voltage. The current is the sum of each battery's current. As an example, consider three 6-volt batteries with one amp current each. So using our power equation, we multiply 6 volts times 3 amps, generating a total of 18 watts. With series connections, it is the opposite. The total voltage is the sum of the individual voltages while the current is the average of each battery's current. Using the same 6 volt batteries yields 18 volts and 1 amp. Calculate the power and it is the same 18 watts. Solar panels exhibit the same results. Three 360 watt panels of 36 volts and 10 amps generates 36 volts at 30 amps. Total power, a little over a kilowatt. When wired in series, the same three panels produce 108 volts at 10 amps. Power again, a little over a kilowatt. The problems arise if you have something like 20 panels. In parallel, 
it would generate 36 volts but at 200 amps. In series, it would be 10 amps but at 720 volts. High current is a problem with wiring. High voltage is a problem with electronics and your connection to your home. Wiring is limited to how much current it can carry. A thick wire like a battery jumper cable can carry 100 amps or more, thin wires much less. The power generated in the wiring is the current squared times the resistance. The thinner and longer the wire, the greater the resistance and the more power generated. The wires get hot. Run enough current through a wire, and soon it operates like the heating element on an electric stove. The wire thickness or gauge has maximum current ratings for each gauge. Though lower gauge wires can carry more current, they are also more expensive. 4 gauge wire costs about $1 per foot, while 16 gauge wire costs 25 cents per foot. To connect solar panels to a home's electrical system or to charge batteries, you need what is called a charge controller. They typically regulate a panel's output to a range of 12 to 15 volts. They have a maximum voltage and current ratings and do not accommodate voltages in excess of 150 volts. Because of current and voltage limitations, many solar installations combine both series and parallel connections. Using the same 36 volt and 10 amp solar panels, the system above would produce 108 volts and 20 amps. If you plan to add battery storage, the key specification to understand is your battery's amp hour capacity. A 100 amp hour battery will generate a continuous 100 amps over an hour, 50 amps for two hours, and 25 amps for four hours. To operate a 120 watt light bulb when it is plugged into a 120 volt wall socket requires 1 amp per hour, but operated from a 12 volt battery requires 10 amps per hour. Consequently, a 100 amp hour battery will power the light bulb for 10 continuous hours. Just like our earlier examples, these large solar storage batteries can operate in series and parallel. 3 in series generates 36 volts at 100 amps, and 3 in parallel generates 12 volts at 300 amps. In either of these cases, the battery should be identical for best results. We hope you learned the basics of solar power systems in the last seven minutes. Visit zomdoc.com to learn more about solar thermal systems.